the spirit of enterprise has helped two other Rolex laureates in their projects, fighting to preserve a nomadic way of life and the largest fish on the planet. The laureates of the Rolex Awards for Enterprise are from all walks of life and all parts of the globe. Every two years, Rolex honor five special individuals and their unique projects. Brad Norman was attracted to Ningaloo Reef in Western Australia because of his passion for the ocean. For Brad, the health of a certain species of giant fish is an indicator of the environmental health of the Earth itself. The oceans are the next frontier. There's so much out there that we are yet to explore. We know more about the moon than we know about, about the ocean. Brad is a marine conservationist who is just as at home in a wetsuit and flippers as he is on dry land. I really think that we're privileged to be able to go in the oceans, in the marine environment. We're just visitors or guests. They've got so much diversity, so many interesting animals. One of the biggest ones and the best for me is the whale shark and that's why I'm here. The whale shark was only discovered in 1828. But like many endangered marine animals, it was soon found to be a biological indicator of the health of the ocean itself. Whale sharks haven't been studied that much over the years because they are a difficult subject to work on. They're very highly migratory. They don't often come to the surface because they don't need to. And they can sit at the bottom for years if they want. It just so happens that when humans get to see them, it is at the surface, hence the reason I'm at Ningaloo Reef, because it's one of the places where they come every year. It's pretty amazing when you swim with a whale shark. When you jump in the ocean and all of a sudden, out of the blue, comes this huge creature. The whale shark is the biggest fish in the ocean. But the title of shark can be misleading. A lot of people think shark, danger, let's not go near them. The whale sharks are one of the gentlest creatures on the planet. But this species is a threatened species, listed as vulnerable to extinction. Brad learned that the markings on individual whale sharks are unique to each fish, just like a fingerprint in humans. This exciting breakthrough is now being used by Brad to uncover the habits of these huge, charismatic fish. It's very important to identify the individual sharks because we don't know a lot of their movements. We don't know where they're going and uh, where they come from most of the time. The photograph is a way of naturally tagging the shark. We can prove that some sharks return to the same area either on a weekly basis or between years. In his laboratory at Ningaloo, Brad and his team are beginning to identify individual whale sharks using the most sophisticated space telescope technology. When you've got thousands of photos that you're trying to compare one photo against, it's very difficult. But we've been able to use an algorithm that was originally used by the Hubble Space Telescope scientists to map um, stars in the night sky. And we've been able to adapt that to mapping and matching the spots on the skin of the shark, which has been a, a fantastic advance. Brad's EcoCean Whale Shark Photo ID Library is set up to receive input from ecotourists and divers all over the world. Actually, 
all the tourists can actually be a part of the research that we're doing because if you've got a camera, which most people do when they go out swimming with the sharks, if you do take a photograph and you want to submit that photo to our online database at whaleshark.org. Now everyone can access Brad's database, opening up the Whale Shark Conservation Project to literally thousands of people. These online research assistants can input data simultaneously, giving a global picture of the whale shark's movements. The photos they take will contribute to Brad's database. But nothing can compare with getting up close and personal with a whale shark. It's a moment they'll never forget. one that um, some people saw earlier this season because um, we can double check by the photo by the photo ID but we can tell because sometimes we've got scarring on them or little marks and this one had a very uh, crinkly tail. Back in the lab Brad and his team are adding to the online database of whale sharks and sightings. This is a perfect match. How many we've got lined up there the spots. This is the encounter that we've actually submitted. Software used by the Hubble Space Telescope has been adapted to map the shark spots, like stars in the night sky. Most of the spots are perfectly matched. 99 in 2005, again, right the way back to 1995. The research also points to the scarcity of whale sharks and the urgent need for conservation. We need to get in there now. We don't have time. We can't just say 20 years down the track we'll do something. They're threatened now and, and species all over the world are becoming extinct at a rate that's just crazy. So if we lose something that's such a large charismatic animal that's an indicator of biological health in the ocean as well, then it's just, it can be quite sad. Well, the Royal Lakes Award is going to be so important for getting this project going in many other parts of the world. We can provide some training or some, some expertise, some equipment to many other countries around the world where whale sharks are currently seen and get them involved in helping with their research, collecting photos. That's going to be such a, an amazing resource of data and we're going to be able to map the movements of hundreds, maybe thousands of whale sharks around the world. And hopefully some of the answers we find will help with the ultimate conservation of, of this species. In the modern world, we take human migration for granted.